like the video in the next five seconds or this thing will attack you tonight and trust me i wouldn't risk it what's up guys soul df back with another video today i have a very special video for you guys today i'm going to be talking about the best most overpowered most glitchy badges in the game i'm also going to be telling you guys which badges you should stay away from this video is going to be for guards for centers for every build i'm going to say you know if this is a certain badge that's only good for centers i'll let you guys know so if you're a center watching this video i know i'm a guard but trust me i got you guys i'm going to tell you guys which badges you should be using another thing i want to mention is that by the time that i upload this video we should be right around 9k so we probably hit 9k if not make sure to hit that subscribe button it actually helps me out a lot i would really appreciate it we're on the road to the big 10k b i want to say thank you so much for 9,000 subscribers all right enough of this intro let's get into it All right, so we're going to be starting off with the finishing badges, then we'll go to shooting, then we'll go to playmaking, then we'll go to defense and rebounding. So starting off with finishing, the first badge, we're going to go from left to right. So the first badge is Acrobat, and this is a badge that boosts the ability to make layups that have a high degree of difficulty. And this video will literally be an hour long, so I'm going to try and speed through this. For some badges, I won't say too much at all, but for Acrobat, this is a badge that... I wouldn't really recommend I don't use it I know some people do but in my opinion I don't think it's all that worth it next up we have back down punisher if you're a guard or a lockdown or something like that I really wouldn't recommend it if you're a big man with a lot of finishing badges then you could use it but if you're one of those big men that only have like 15 finishing badges like me then I might you know want to go a different route but if you do have a lot like 20 plus then you could use back down punisher as a big man next up we have consistent finisher this is a badge that i would also shy away from i know some people do use it it reduces the penalty for poorly released labs but i really don't think that is all that important when it comes to finishing badges next up we have contact finisher and you guys see i have it on hall of fame on my bp build right here contact finisher i can't stress it enough it's a really good badge it's one of if not the best finishing badges so if you are a slasher 100 percent put it on hall of fame um, my build does have slashing in the pie chart so that's why I have it on Hall of Fame this this badge helps you with contact layups and contact dunks it's one of the best finishing badges in the game I would honestly recommend it for all builds big men guard whatever it is I really recommend it next up we have cross key score and this is another badge that I would shy away from you guys see that I don't have it on my setup some people could use this if you're like a slasher if you have a lot of finishing badges but I just don't think it's worth it to spend some badge points on the next wave deep hooks if you're a guard don't use this if you're a big man that takes hook shots then you could use it if you want but I wouldn't that's not like a, a serious go-to badge unless you really take a lot of hooks next up we have drop step if you're a guard do not use this badge if you are a big man I would recommend using this badge if you do drop steps but if you don't do drop steps then there's really no point in using this badge next up we have another finishing badge that I have on Hall of Fame fancy footwork if you are a guard if you're a slasher a slasher of any type then use this badge the only reason that I wouldn't use this badge if if is if I was a big man that didn't really drive in but this badge gives you those massive hop steps like I know you guys have seen it someone's driving into the paint they tap X to get that hop step and they just fly right past you that is this badge they have that badge on Hall of Fame so I really recommend using fancy footwork getting that badge on at least something I use it on Hall of Fame like you guys can see fast break fast break finisher I can't talk boost players takeover meter when completing a dunk on a fast break I cannot name one person that uses this badge so I would not recommend that giant slayer I use on bronze if you have the badge points for it it's a solid badge it heightens the effectiveness of layups over taller defenders so if you're like a smaller player and you're driving in on a big man then this badge is for you but if you're a big man there's really no point on using this badge because there's really no taller defenders if you're already one of the tall players you know what i'm saying so if you're a guard you could use this badge but if you're a big man i would not use it next up we have lob city finisher and if you're like a guard that's not a slasher or any build really that's not a slasher then i wouldn't recommend using it but for me i have 15 finishing badges i don't think it's that important but if you do have 15 finishing badges or something like that then you could put it on bronze and if you are a complete slashing build then you want to put it on hall of fame but yeah i don't really think it's that needed to go on hall of fame so that's why i only have it on bronze on my guard build next up pick and roller you don't want to use this badge i don't know anyone that uses that badge it's just it's not good it sounds good but trust me it's not good pro touch this is a badge that i used to use back in like september you see it gives an additional boost for having good layup timing but no one really uses this badge anymore it's kind of you know like out of style just trust me don't use pro touch unless 
I mean, I don't even know why you would use it, so just don't use Pro Touch. Next up is Put Back Boss. This is another badge that you should not use if you're a guard. If you're a big man with a lot of finishing badges, then you could use it. You know, I'm talking like 22 plus finishing badges, but I would not prioritize this badge by any means. Um, if you are a big man next up we have relentless finisher which is actually a really good badge so if you are a slasher you definitely want to get this badge whether you're a big man that slashes or finishes well or a guard or whatever you want to use this badge i use it on bronze because as you guys see the hall of fame badges i just prioritize them a little bit better but relentless finisher is still a really good badge so if you can get that on then i would recommend it next up is showtime again i like fast break finisher i cannot name one person that uses this badge just, I'm not even going to talk about it. Don't use Showtime. Still the refinish you guys see I have in Hall of Fame. I really like this badge. If you're a guard, even if you're not a slashing guard, this is a badge that's really important to have on. Like, if you have one finishing badge, then you should go, you should put it on Slithery Finisher. Because Slithery Finisher, um, kind of like when you're driving in and you're taking the layup, this gives you animations that will, like, avoid and dodge your defender. So just trust me, it's a good badge. Um, you guys definitely want to put that on. Teardropper is the last finishing badge. And again, like the other badges, I don't know anyone that uses it. It kind of sounds good, but in, in all honesty, like who is really coming into the park or whatever you're playing, Wreck and taking teardroppers. Like no one really does that in 2K at all. So that's going to be it for the finishing badge section. All right, so now we're going to talk about shooting badges. And the first badge is catch and shoot. If you're a guard that isos a lot and doesn't really ever catch the ball, like don't use this badge. It's that simple. But if you're a spot up or a shooter that catch and shoots, then use this badge. I mean, it's pretty obvious. Um, yeah, for cut and shoot, that's that's just kind of self-explanatory. Clutch shooter, I would kind of shy away from this badge. I know some people do use it, but it's kind of more of like a troll badge. Um, I wouldn't recommend that. Corner specialist. If you're a corner spot up, then you might just want to use corner specialist. But I think catch and shoot and corner specialist, it's kind of like pick one or the other. I wouldn't really recommend using both. It's kind of just pick one or the other. If you're in the corner a lot, then you can go corner specialist. But if you're kind of spotting up all over the place, then just go catch and shoot and use no corner specialist. Next up is Deadeye. And you guys see I have it on Hall of Fame. This is an important badge because you know this contest when you get like 5% or like 10 or like 12% contested. And it's really nothing. But like you miss those shots. And if you have Deadeye on, it's like you weren't even contested on those shots. And sometimes you can even hit lightly contests like 33%, 40% even. Um, Hall of Fame Deadeye is just really glitchy. Some people say that it's not, but trust me, it is. Deep Fades, if you're a guard, do not use this badge. If you are a big man that takes Deep Fades, then you might want to use that badge. But if you're a guard, definitely don't use this badge. Def Difficult Shots is a badge that's kind of overrated this year. Some people have figured that out by now. But it, there's really no point in using it on Gold or Hall of Fame. Even if you fade, you only really need this on Bronze or Silver. If I had an extra badge on this build, I would definitely put Difficult Shots on Silver. Because I'm more comfortable with Difficult Shots on Silver. But yeah, bronze is solid. If you're a big man, you don't need that. But if you are a guard that can fade, put difficult shots on bronze or silver if you can. Flexible release is a badge that you really don't need. Unless you have like 30 shooting badges, I wouldn't use it. Green Machine. I have it on Hall of Fame. This is a, a really good badge. Like, I don't even really have to talk about it. It just, you'll green more with this badge on. Put it on Hall of Fame if you are a shooter, of course. Hot Start is actually an underrated badge. But... You know, if you don't have enough badges, then you are not going to be able to get it on. It's not really a badge you have to prioritize. But again, if you have like 30 badges, then you could put this on bronze or even silver or something like that. Hot Zone Hunter is a very good badge if you have hot zones especially, which a lot of us shooters do have. So I recommend putting it on Hall of Fame and then just move on to the next one, which is Ice in Veins. I cannot tell you one person that uses this badge. So, I mean, we're like... I don't know. Let's just move on to the next one because there's no point. Do not use that badge. Pick and popper. It sounds like a good badge for like stretch bigs or shooting centers. You know, people that will set a pick and then pop. But trust me, this is an overrated badge. It really doesn't do anything this year. In the past, this has been a good badge. But if you're a big man or whatever, don't waste your time on that badge. Do not upgrade it. It's not worth it. Pump fake maestro. No one uses this badge also. Let's just move on to the next one. Quick draw. I recommend maxing this out. If you can get it on gold, which everybody can, I recommend doing that. But, I mean, unless you like silver for some reason, then you could do that. But I like having the fast jump shots. So I put mine all the way in Hall of Fame. If you can get it on Hall of Fame, I really recommend that. Because getting your shot off quick, you know, it might be hard for some of you beginners to time a quick jump shot like that. But it's going to give you the advantage in the long run to get your jump shot off quicker than everybody else. Range extender. I have it on Hall of Fame. And I recommend 
that you upgrade this badge if possible if you're a big man that doesn't have too many shooting badges then maybe you just put it on like silver or something but if you do have a lot of uh, shooting badges like me i have 21 then i would prioritize this it doesn't only help you with deep threes it helps you with deep twos as well and that's something that a lot of people don't know about this badge this year now we have four badges left and some of these are solid some of them are not that good slippery off ball I wouldn't really recommend it. Maybe put it on bronze if you're like a spot up, but there's just some other badges that I would prioritize instead of this one. So there's really, I don't know. There's not really too many builds where I would put that badge on. Steady Shooter is kind of more of a troll badge like Clutch Shooter. So again, I would kind of stay away from that badge as well. Tyler Shooter, I know some people that put it on bronze, but again, I have 21 shooting badges. These badges that I have on are more important. So if you do have more than me, you have, you know you have more than 21, then you could put this on if you want. Um, but I would recommend putting it on bronze, nothing higher than that. Then we have volume shooter, which is a badge that I used to use. And again, I only have 21 shooting badges on this build. If I had more, then I might use volume shooter. It boosts your shot percentage throughout the game. Whether you're shooting bad, whether you're shooting good, volume shooter will give you a shot percentage boost. All right, I can already tell this video is getting kind of long. So if you are still watching, I would consider yourself a loyal or maybe you're just trying to get some information. But go in the comments and just comment the two words best badges. And this will show me that you're still watching the video because I do want to know who has made it this far into the video. But now we're going to get into the playmaking badges. So as you guys see, I only have 14 playmaking badges on this build. The first badge here is Ankle Breaker. If I had more badges, I would use Ankle Breaker because after patch 10, Ankle Breaker is actually a solid badge. But if you have less badges than me, then definitely don't use it because there are other badges, as you guys see, that I have on that I would prioritize over Ankle Breaker. Next up, we have Bailout, and this is a actually really good badge, even for big men. This could be your one playmaking badge. If you are a big man with one playmaking badge, you could choose to put this on because if you're shooting or you're, you know, you're going up with a layup or something and you want to pass out of it, you normally throw the ball out of bounds. But if you have bailout on bronze, you will not throw the ball out of bounds. It's really weird. You do not need it higher than bronze. Trust me, bailout on bronze is a glitch. Put that on. Break starter. This is only good for like rec and pro-am. So if you're like a park player, then don't use this badge at all. But if you're a big man or a guard that plays pro-am or rec, then you could put this badge on bronze. Next up, we have diamond. This is kind of like a teammate badge. And I prefer floor general, which I'm going to talk about more. But yeah, if you don't have enough badges, then it's kind of one or the other. I chose Floor General. But if you do have more playmaking badges, then you could put Dimer on. It's actually a really good badge. It'll help your teammates out a lot. Next up, we have Downhill. And this is actually an underrated badge. You run quick in transition with this badge. So if you play Rec or pro or whatever, and you're a guard or whatever, a lockdown, then you could put this badge on. And it'll help you run quicker in transition. But there's really no need if you just play twos or even park threes, even though it does help in park threes, I believe. Next up is Dream Shake. We don't really even have to spend too much time in this. No one uses this badge. We'll move on to Flashy Passer. This is a badge that nobody really uses either. It, I mean, it does help you throw flashy passes, but as you guys see, gives an additional boost to player's takeover meter after completing an assist with the flashy pass. So if you want to get your takeover quicker, then you could put this badge on, but I mean, other than that, there's really no need. Like I said, I prefer Floor General over Dimer, and the reason for this is because I mean I would I would want to get both but if I can only pick one I go floor general because it boosts all of their stats rather than dimer just boosting their shooting stats when I pass to them floor general boosts all of their stats so next up we have handles for days and this is a really important badge if you're a guard you want to max this out 100% because as you guys know stamina you know you run out of it quick this year and handles for days helps you maintain stamina lob city passer is a badge that if you want to use it if you're throwing lobs you don't need it anything higher than bronze bronze lob city is good also needle threader some people like to put that on when they're throwing lobs so you can put needle threader also on bronze it'll just help you you know you know some of those passes where you get tipped or you know just barely stolen um in a passing lane needle threader will help you get that pass through the lane next up we have pass fake maestro no one really used this badge i'm not going to spend too much time on it next up post spin technician if you're a guard then I wouldn't recommend using this badge, but if you're a big man or someone that works out of the post and likes to spin off their defender, then this badge is kind of glitchy and I would recommend it. Quick first step is a badge that is basically a must for all guards, even lockdowns and big men. This badge can be effective if you like to catch the ball, you know, go go to the triple threat or start doing jab steps, stuff like that. And then that that first step is going to be quick and explosive and you'll get by your defender. So if you're if the, if that sounds like you, your play style, then you need quick first step. But if you're a guard, max this badge out, no doubt in my mind. Next up is Space Creator. And this is a badge that sounds really good. Like when you hear Space Creator, it sounds like a really good badge. And it is it is pretty good, but it only really works if you do hop. So if you're like running to a side and you do a hop backwards, 
sometimes it'll catch your ankles i mean it'll catch your defender's ankles so if you're a big man do not use space creator but if you are a guard that dribbles a lot then i would recommend using it like you like you guys can see i only have 14 badges so i unfortunately can only get it on bronze but i would recommend putting that on gold if you can do so next up stop and go this badge i do not recommend it is really not effective tight handles you could use it but it's really not that effective now that the behind the back has been patched after pack patch 10 um a lot of people are just shying away from it like me i'm not using it at all the last badge is unpluckable and i used to use this on bronze some people still use it on bronze but after patch 10 i feel like they kind of changed something about the unpluckable badge and i feel like i get ripped a lot more and it's not like you can just put unpluckable on bronze and be okay now i feel like i don't know i feel like you need to upgrade it so i have it on gold i don't know what you guys how you guys feel about that if you're getting ripped more since patch 10 or what but yeah I put Unpluckable on gold. If you're a guard, I really recommend it. If you're a big man, it doesn't really matter that much. Now for the last section of this video, the defense slash rebounding badges. First off, we have box. If you're a guard, there's no need for this badge because this badge box helps you with box outs. And if you're a big man, I don't even really recommend it because box outs are kind of like easy. Like if you need help with box outs, then you need some other... Like, you need to address some other things with your game. I don't really think you need the badge box, but if you're a big man with, like, 30 uh, defense and rebounding badges, then you could put box on. But if you have, like, only, like, 15 or something like that, then I'd probably go somewhere else. Next up is brick wall. If you're a guard, definitely don't use it. If you're a lock, you could use it. And if you're a big man, I would really recommend it, unless you, for some reason, don't set a lot of screens with brick wall, you know. I don't really have to talk about it. You guys know what brick wall does. It it sets harder screens on the defender. Next up, we have chase down artist, and this is a badge that I completely love. Like I try to tell everyone that I play with how good this badge is, but sometimes they just don't understand. This badge literally makes you fly for a block. Like if there's someone driving and you don't have this badge on, you'll just jump. But if you have this badge on, there's a noticeably different, you know, jump height or whatever your your player literally flies with this badge on so you can put it on bronze you can put it on gold whatever if you're a big man with a lot of defensive rebounding badges max this badge out 100 i really recommend it but if you're a guard like me i only have eight badges i do like to use it but i mean I, I can't really get it on there's other badges to prioritize sometimes i'll take off pick dodger maybe just throw it on bronze or something but if i'm playing twos i don't know i just i don't really use it and then we have clamps which is a really good badge if you're a guard or a lockdown 100 you need to max this badge out it is the best defensive badge in the game for guards if you're a big man you know if you have enough badges you could put this on but i would kind of see if you have any badges left over but this is a really good badge it helps you keep your def or the uh, the person with the ball in front of you um, it kind of makes it harder for them to get by you heart crusher. Do not use this badge Let's move on to interceptor interceptor is actually a really good badge if you have a long wingspan or if you're a big man You know, whatever I really recommend getting interceptor It'll help you get passing lane steals, but if you're small like me I mean, I shouldn't even really have this badge on to be honest because my wingspan wingspan is minimum But I don't know. I like interceptor a lot. So I do have it on but um, Yeah, if you have longer arms this badge is gonna be really glitchy for you intimidator as you guys see intimidates offensive players causing them to miss shots more often all you guys need for this badge is bronze um and i would recommend every single build gets this badge on at least bronze nothing you don't really need it higher than that um so yeah bronze lightning reflexes some players do use this like lockdowns if you have a ton of defensive and rebounding badges you could use it but i wouldn't really recommend using it after that next up we have moving truck if you're a lockdown or a guard i don't really recommend it but if you are a big man again with a ton of shoot i mean not shooting defense slash rebounding badges then i would recommend using moving truck and then we have off ball pest nobody really uses this badge i have heard a few good things about it but like i don't, I don't know it really hasn't broken the, the comp scene no one really uses that in competitive games then we have pick dodger some people say that it doesn't work but i don't know i'm kind of of the belief that it does so i use it on goal if you're a guard or a lockdown that is going to be dodging screens then i would recommend using it if you're a big man it's not really that important and then we go to pickpocket which is also another solid badge it's not as good as it's been in the past but pickpocket is still pretty solid i only have eight badges i would put it on if i had more but like I said, I only have eight, so I, I can't get that on. If you're locked down, I would max it out. If you're a big man, I probably wouldn't use it if I was a big man. But if I'm a guard with, you know, if I'm a two-way build or something like that, then I would definitely put pickpocket on at least bronze. Next up is pogo stick. And some, this is kind of a debatable one. I like pogo stick 
you know, if you're in the if you're in the paint and there's someone, you know, going up for a shot on you or going up for a layup and they pump fake and you jump, pogo stick allows you to, you know, it is what it says, pogo stick. You literally bounce back up like a pogo stick. If you spam Y, you'll just keep jumping. So that's why it's kind of glitchy. Some people say you don't need it, but I kind of like it. So if you're a big man, I would really recommend it. Post move lockdown. This is a badge that if you're a guard, you do not need, but if you are a big man, you could put it on. Rebound chaser is a must have if you are a big man, even if you're a lockdown, you could use it. Um, this is just going to allow you to get rebounds better. That's that's the badge this year for rebounding. Rim Protector improves the ability to block shots. So this is a badge. Um, I would prefer having chase down. It's kind of a debate. Um, but yeah, I would, I would prioritize having chase down. And then if you still have badges, you could put on Rim Protector. At that point, you should be blocking every shot in the paint. Um, and then we have Tireless Defender. This is a badge that is kind of hard to get to this year with all of the other badges. But if you do run out of stamina a lot and you're just kind of tired of that, you want to put Tyler's Defender on, put it on. It'll help you maintain stamina on defense. Next up, we have Trapper. And this is a badge that not too many people use, but it is a solid badge. I wouldn't really recommend it. It's more of like a Prime or Rec badge. Um, but yeah, if you're just a park player, then I wouldn't recommend it. Then we have the last badge of the entire video, Worm. And Worm is a badge that I don't know. I don't, I don't completely recommend it. If you're a guard, do not use it. If you're a lockdown, don't use it. But this badge helps you break box outs. So if you're if you're trying to break box outs, then you could use it if you have some other badge points left over. But if you are a big man, there are definitely some other badges that I would prioritize, like Rebound Chaser, like Chase Down Artist, Brick Wall, and all the other badges that I've named in this video. <sighs> Jesus Christ, I cannot believe that I just talked that long. But if you guys are still watching, go in the comments and just comment the word GOAT. Because, I mean, at this point, like, this video is way longer than I ever expected. I want to see who's still watching. I hope you guys learned something, though, because this was like a complete ultimate badge breakdown. I literally went over every single badge in the game. I just want to mention that I will still be doing the Xbox gift card giveaway on my Twitter, which is at YT Solo. It'll pop up on the screen right there. Um, if you guys want to check that out, when I hit 10K subs, I'll be doing that giveaway. But yeah, I hope you guys learned something or enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Yeah, niggas hate on me, hate on me. I'm getting money, what the fuck can you say to me? Yeah, bitches cry for me, cry for me, cry for me. If you my nigga, then you're raw for me, raw for me. Yeah, you a treat, but you a dog to me, dog to me. Baby, you see me, get no love from me, love from me. I keep a hoodie, cause it's cold to me, cold to me. So when y'all see me, y'all gon' notice me.